So let's take a moment and talk about the Akashic Records. Good morning, my friends. It is a, actually a beautiful Saturday here in Akron, Ohio, and I am hopping on here to, to talk to you guys about a couple of different topics today. So this video that I'm doing now is all about the Akashic Records. And I'm putting the quotes up there for a very specific reason. But first, before we move into this amazing topic, let's have a sip of the elixir of life. Mm, 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 mm. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> the Akashic Records, you know, this is something that's very, it's a very interesting topic because the modern New Age movement uh, uses this and bandies this about quite a lot. And I cannot tell you how many people have contacted me for private sessions and have said, are you reading my Akashic Records? Um. It's a fascinating concept. I even had someone just the other day tell me after a live stream that I was channeling the Akashic Records. You know, in this, on this channel, you'll often hear me say, you know, new age dogma is as detrimental as old age dogma. And the concept of the Akashic Records is a, is a absolutely new age dogma. And let, let me give you the reason why I say that. Back in the early 1900s, there was a group called the Theosophical Society, and it's still around today, but it was really big in the heyday back in the day. Uh, they were very much pushing into channeling and, and mediumship and various things, and uh, several people were very much involved in the Theosophical Society, including Edgar Cayce. Um, but they had this underlying belief that... Um, was based in this idea of taking Indian words and Indian meanings, and they created new beliefs around these Indian words. Now, the Akashic records come from the word Akasha, and the word Akasha did not mean an ethereal library. Akasha literally meant the events of your life and the culminating result thereof, the Akasha. It's kind of like, it's kind of like saying karma or, or um, just basically the results of, of all of the things you've done in life, the Akasha. In the early 1900s, the Theosophical Society decided that they created this thing called the Akashic Record, saying that somewhere out in the ethers, there's this giant, vast storehouse of knowledge that is specifically the Akashic Records. And the terminology made, makes no sense when you, th when you combine it with where the original word came from, Akasha. The Akashic Records is, is a construct of the Theosophical Society and became um, a thing that now, a hundred years later, people just think it's what, it's the, what it is. It's, they've decided to buy into that sort of belief, that sort of metho methodology. Now, if I was going to look at the Akashic Records from a different standpoint, I would call it a label for um, our higher self-awareness. That's what I would call, call it. I wouldn't call it the Akashic Records because the concept of that is far too complex than I think it really is. I think it's all far simpler. You know, when we set our fears aside, we, we have access to more knowledge because we're, our filter is thinner, our veil is thinner. The veil is our fear, it's our anxieties. Now, you know, that comes from that concept comes from Sufism. You know, they say that God is on one side of a veil and we're on the other side of the veil, and the veil is, a, is a fear, and, we're, and our life is struggled against the veil. So it comes back to this idea that, that here in the physical world, we're kind of veiled by fears, we're kind of veiled by anxieties. But when we release those fears, we have a clearer sight because the veil has been lifted. And you'll notice on my channel, what, what I'm always talking about is releasing your fears, coming back to the space of exhaling, coming back to that space of just being in that, that space. I don't call that the Akashic Records in any way, shape, or form. I don't use that terminology. I don't believe in that terminology. I know historically that it's, it's a commandeering of an Indian word and mistranslating its meaning. 
and the concept of this Akashic record is is a um, it's a new age uh, construct. Now, why do I say it's a new age construct? The Theosophical Society is what the New Age movement moved out of. In fact, the, the terminology New Age comes from the Theosophical Society. And so when you look at this, um, this belief system they've created now, also understand the Theosophical Society are also the people who tried to tell the world that Krishnamurti was the Messiah, and Krishnamurti denied that. So the Theosophical Society had its own issues altogether as well. But once again, I come back to that one quote from my one regression. When you seek a path, a path is laid before you, but until you turn the path back to yourself, you never find the doorway. Well, the Theosophical Society was just creating paths. This concept of the ethers and the Akashic records and all that stuff, those are just mental paths, mental constructs around something far more simple. And when people go down this road of, of you saying it's the Akashic records, usually it's not because of necessarily their, their belief in it, but it's, it's more so about their belief in saying, I have the knowledge and I am I'm aware of what you're doing, and it's, it's less about the actual reality of it and more about the putting themselves in a position of authority. And so if I could pull away all the, all the libraries of the Theosophical Society, the, the entire uh, foundation of the New Age movement falls apart because the Theosophical Society created this foundation for the modern New Age movement, and it creates this, this ongoing... Um, pathway away from yourself and away from the present because they say you have to do certain techniques and certain methods which which elicit needing a length of time and it comes back to the idea of it's all far simpler get present get fearless and you have everything and when you come to the, the realization that that all of the labels and definitions and and constructs really keep you bl- behind the veil, keep you blinded, because it's, it's, it's not that complicated. It's not that labeled. You know, people will often speak of the Akashic Records like it's a sacred word. There are no sacred words. There are no sacred words. That is also a construct of man. Here in the present, it is you and your source. And this illusion of belief that's around us is, is available to us as soon as we drop the veil of fear you know, and it really comes back to that idea of let go of the paths and come back to yourself. You know, I've never, I've never said that I think that we ought to follow any sort of religion or school of thought. I've often said spirituality is a personal journey, but I think your journey can be a long and arduous one if you succumb to the pathways of a spiritual group or a religion and you follow those without coming back to yourself and stepping into that I am, I am, I am fearless, I am joyful, I am love. And when you come back to that, all the information comes to you because you no longer are, are having the information veiled by your fears. And so this is my thought on the Akashic Records. And like I said, I often have people tell me that I am tapping into the Akashic Records and all these things. And I don't believe it in any way, shape, or form. I think it's all far, far simpler. Um, that's my thought on this. You guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Bye.